All right, folks, I've got Steve back on the line. We just had a momentary internet connection trouble there, um, and he'll continue talking with what, what he was going about. Um, I, I think I was talking about how, in many ways, these, you know, the, the poems are as much a mystery to me as they are anyone else. You know, they kind of cycle around these themes and, and, and zoom in and out of, uh, of the, the personal and the universal. Uh, and I try not to second guess what, where they're coming from as they're, you know, I, I, I say them out loud and make sure they sound good to me and they have a flow and a rhythm uh, and that it makes some sort of, sense, but I, I, I would hesitate to say I know what they mean because some, some lines are very clear to me what they mean and what they refer to in my own life. And some are, some are uh, a complete mystery. And I've learned to be okay with that, that uh, it's not my job as a poet or a lyric writer to explain away uh, those um, mysterious places within the art where other people can actually uh, place their own life experience and have have an original emotional connection to a work as opposed to being like a voyeur or watching somebody else's life you know which is inherently less interesting than having a meaningful experience with a piece of art yeah absolutely i mean definitely you know too as i have kind of age i've been more interested, you know, in movies, poetry, music that kind of <laughs> has some mysteries left rather than explains everything. So I definitely get where you're coming from there. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, I was just curious, uh, given that, um, you know, you you were, it, it seems like first a musician, uh, when you actually write, is there any element of like, writing to music or anything like that like I mean you know when I listen to like the Harvest Man recordings or you know think about the instrumentals to Neurosis I find that that the kind of environment or like the atmosphere that the music has is pretty conducive to, to that kind of creative thinking so I was just curious if that played a role um not usually I think I usually write in silence um, uh, and, and if I do have any sort of music, it would have to be, um, it would probably have to be very ambient. Yeah. I would have to definitely not have any voices, uh, any words, and maybe not any, you know, driving beats or anything. It would have to be, you know, like I, I could always probably write to Brian Eno or Stars of the Lid or, you know. Uh, things that just kind of have a become like an atmospheric moody wallpaper, you know, if I, if I tune out. Um, yeah. Totally. But for the most part, because I'm, I'm usually saying the words uh, in my head, you know, I'm, I'm usually trying to find a rhythm of how they should sound. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I wrote a bunch of poems to this one like ambient, it was an ambient song by William Basinski, uh, Water Music 2, I think it was called, but it's just fun, great, I don't know. What's that? Great choice. Yeah, yeah, well, it, what was fun about it is that it gets you in this mindset and, you know, I felt like, again, kind of because there's an at atmosphere to it, it's a place that you can return to. So I was just curious about that because I know you also, um, use like a lot of like drones in the music and and like the electronic elements I think are very kind of match that ambient quality that you were describing yeah for sure and I, I'm in fact I've I've set some I did a reading a couple of weeks ago and I, I brought in some ambient music behind me a few times and manipulated uh, manipulated the voice electronically a little bit to kind of set that mood because yeah part of me is like you said I think I'm always in that mindset you know that can jump right into that like you said like William Bazinski I, I could easily make him my soundtrack <laughs> you know, right right for walking around you know just kind of live and live in that mood 
uh, you know, and so um, I think there is a connection, I think, in that the, the introspective nature of the way I write and, and what I like about music, the introspective nature of music. Obviously, I'm, I'm drawn to that both in creating and as a listener. So I see that connection. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I even saw in the acknowledgments, you know, that you would uh, thank, thank Jacob Bannon from Converge. And like, you know, he does a painting and I just feel like there's a pretty interesting conversation to be had about like making art in multiple genres at once and how, you know, the sensibilities from one is kind of, it's, you really can't separate it from the other, you know what I mean? And I just find that pretty compelling again, just because I came into music first and then went into writing poetry. Um, but yeah, so uh, you, you did a writing, was it a digital reading? Are you doing any kind of, you know, tour or anything like that? I guess with COVID, that's a little bit complicated. Yeah, no, that all got screwed. Yeah. Um, it, it was uh, with a fest, Supersonic, in uh, Birmingham, England, which uh, Neurosis played last year in person. But I, I participated in distance, from a distance from my home studio and... Uh, jumped a few learning curve hurdles and taught myself how to shoot multi-cam video and edit it myself and send it to them to uh, make it a little more appealing than another iPhone performance. I think the world's getting quickly sick of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, no, that was good. And, uh, um, yeah, I like the idea of, you know, take, I mean, you know, and if you look back at some of the, I mean, poetry readings, I feel like, not that I go to many of them or, or, you know, have attended many, very few in my lifetime, in fact, but I have a feeling that those could go either way real quick. And I, I like the way the energy felt when you look at films of the late 60s or early 70s, of the kind of avant-garde uh, poetry readings where people started to really kind of push the limits and, you know, in, include accompaniment or uh, something to, to give it an extra dimension you know of course the words should say everything they want to say on their own and whether you're reading them or whether somebody's experiencing them on a claiming a piece of paper you know but uh i, I like that kind of combination of media yeah i mean I, I definitely appreciate that i think of that in the same way where like you know a lot of people will say hey um you know this band was really great live they sounded just like their album which like I think is is fine, but I do go to live shows for something a little bit different. Same with the the poetry reading, you know. Like, in, in my opinion, you know, you you have the words on the page. That's like the album, and then the performance at least gives a possibility to add a, a different dimension to that. So I mean, I am definitely interested to see uh, the performance. Is that on YouTube or anything? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you just oh. look up Supersonic Festival, and it'll be there definitely check it out well um you know that that was kind of it for my questions just wanted to talk a little bit about the book um anything else you had in mind no thanks for uh thanks for your time and helping get the word out about it much appreciated oh yeah absolutely thanks so much for your time and uh i really enjoyed the book and looking forward to you know if you end up publishing any more yeah yeah, I look forward to that as well. I think it opened a new pathway. Now, now that I've admitted to myself that I, I do it, now I've got another pathway of uh, expression. So looking forward right. to exploring it. The floodgates are open. Yep. All right. Bye, Steve. All right, man. Take care.